Attorney General Eric Holder and Republican Congressman Darrell Issa are set to face off later today in a critical meeting on that botched, fast and furious anti-gun running operation. The Attorney General is expected to turn over internal Justice Department documents that are related to the failed program, and the two have been battling over this for months. Issa warns if Holder doesn't give him the information, he'll move ahead with a contempt of Congress vote tomorrow. Congressman Peter Welch is a member of the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. Congressman, good morning. Good morning. The Attorney General requested this face-to-face -face meeting with Congressman Issa to try to resolve this issue. What are you expecting from today's meeting? Well, uh, ideally, they'd reach, an, uh, they'd reach an agreement, an understanding. I mean, this has essentially gotten to become a political spectacle, and it looks to me like a political agenda. You know, the goal of oversight is to get to, to the bottom of what happened and hold people accountable. If this were a real investigation by the committee, we would be going back to the Bush administration and the Bush Attorney General, because that's when this Fast and Furious started. Uh, Attorney General Holder is the one who unwound it. Secondly, Holder has been very cooperative. He's testified eight different times before Congress. And third, every time uh, Mr. Holder has provided reams of documents, thousands of emails, uh, uh, Mr. Issa has changed the request, changed what he wants, and keeps moving the goalposts. So, so you're my convinced hope is that what you need, you already have, that this is just an ongoing set of political harassments? Well, it looks that way to me, on the basis of the fact that Holder has testified, as I mentioned, eight times. He's basically opened up his files, and Mr. Issa has constantly changed what he's requesting. So, it, it, and also, the big question here is why doesn't the committee want to go back to the Bush administration when this operation started? So, you're isolating it, focusing on the, your attention on the person who actually unwound the operation, who was not the initiator of it. There's no evidence whatsoever that Mr. Holder was involved. So, it does raise the question of political motivation. Well, the Rolling Stone headline when they were talking about this says that the GOP is at war with the Attorney General. Do you think that that's true or a little bit of hyperbole? Well, there's a little bit of hyperbole, but it's a political battle. And it's intended, I think, to discredit Mr. Holder. Uh, it's intended to discredit the Justice Department. Uh, and, you know, oversight is an extraordinarily important function uh, that government has. And Mr. Issa has a lot of power as the chair of this extremely important committee. And I strongly support having access to as much information as we legitimately can request. But there has to be some restraint. It's like with a prosecutor, the awesome power does require judgment it requires restraint and it can't be used as a fishing expedition for political ends and I think we, we're at that point right now. Is Congressman Issa serious if the DOG, uh, fail, DOJ fails to uh, provide the subpoenaed documents do you think that he'll move ahead with a contempt vote? I think he might. I, I do. I, he's got the votes on the committee, and again, it, this becomes a political deal uh, where, unfortunately, everything is so partisan that if this is put before the committee on a Republican majority, the likelihood is Mr. Issa could probably get a contempt citation, or he, he, he could probably get the vote if he wants it. And, and let me ask you what you make of this. The National Border Patrol Council, which represents 17,000 of the uh, agency's non-supervisory agents, called for Holder's resignation yesterday. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I actually don't understand what the what their rationale is. You know, there is an enormous amount of heartbreak because the Fast and Furious operation, again, begun in the Phoenix office and under the Bush administration, and I'm not certainly not accusing President Bush of knowing what was going on, but that's when it happened. One of those guns that ran across the border was used, was used at a time when one of their agents got killed, and there's an enormous uh, sense of loss among that community, and I think that probably is part of it, but there's no evidence whatsoever that Attorney General Holder had anything uh, to do other than to try to get to the bottom of it in, in that operation. We'll continue to watch this today. Big meeting coming up. Congressman Peter Welch, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Uh, I don't